Hi, my name is Mark Siltzer, uh, you know, currently the president of the Canadian Bison Association and we're out here at uh, Wolverine Bison, which is our operation uh, close to Humboldt. And just wanted to talk a bit about, uh, you know, the bison industry, where it's, uh, where it's been, uh, you know, how far we've come and, and where we're hoping to, to see it go in the future. You know, when you look back at the numbers, uh, traditionally bison, uh, we believe is a real conservation success story. We had at one time somewhere throughout North America, probably estimates were as high as 60 million head. They were slaughtered off to the point of virtual extinction with less than a thousand head remaining. And since that time, through conservation efforts on, on behalf of governments, uh, NGOs and private ranchers, we managed to bring these animals back to where currently now in North America there's approximately 400,000 head between Canada and the U.S. I think that you know what's really starting to to look at driving the industry is is the meat. Um, you know we've got you know bison meat is is something that's lower in fat, higher in essential minerals, has a better fatty acid profile than a lot of other meats that are out there, and it's the demand for the product that's really going to fuel the industry. And we've seen you know over the past number of years where where the demand for bison meat has has been growing exponentially, and in part due to uh, you know, an aging baby boomer population looking to make healthier lifestyle choices. And as a result, uh, we, we think that the, it's just going to continue to grow and the demand for the product continues both throughout Canada and North America and, and into the EU and other, other parts of the globe. And so I, with that, I think that, uh, you know, there's tremendous potential lies within the industry. And the, the animal itself, you're looking at an animal that's indigenous to North America, so they're well adapted for our climate and, and the conditions that we have here, and that's one of the reasons why they do so well and they thrive in this environment. They've, uh, you know, Mother Nature designed them to do that, and, and over thousands and thousands of years they've, uh, they've developed, and, and so they're a very hardy animal, um, you know, that can su survive, you know, very harsh conditions from extreme cold to extreme heat. And, and they make a real good, uh, you know, diversification, I think, for uh, in the ag sector. But I think one thing that a lot of people overlook is, is the agility of this animal. They look at them and they, in a setting like this, and, and feel that they're, they're big and they're cumbersome and they're slow. But, but in actual fact, they're very athletic. They can move uh, quite fast. They're, they can reach speeds of up to 30 miles an hour when they're running. Uh, you know, jump a six foot fence if they want to, it's not a big issue for them. And I think as a result, that's where the general public has to be careful. They, they see these in an environment, maybe in a park or even in a private uh, ranch setting, and they tend to, you know, they'll maybe climb the fence and think they can get in and get a closer shot. And, and as a result, they don't know how fast those animals can be. And, and when threatened, uh, you know, they, they've been known to hurt some people. and significantly so it's it's something that you have to be aware of and the people that work with them every day get to know the animals know their behavior and how to handle them and as a result uh, you know we've we've been fortunate we haven't had a lot of significant injuries in the industry and if they're properly handled there shouldn't be we started back in 1994 and, uh, you know, we're, my wife Denise and I are partners with uh, Cease and, and Jane Stumberg. And, and so it was, it was just an opportunity. And I think we looked at the industry and thought there was tremendous potential. Uh, you know, wanted to get into something that was a little bit, uh, a little bit different. And when you're looking at bison, I, I think that, uh, you know, the labor component in, in a bison operation is somewhat less. You know, because the animals are, are pretty much on pasture, uh, they... They calve without without assistance for obvious reasons, and uh, you know we just felt that it was that there was an opportunity and saw you know tremendous growth potential when you look at per capita consumption of bison meat in North America being 
you know, roughly a quarter of a pound per person and, and some of the other commodities, you know, being uh, significantly higher, we just thought the growth potential uh, in the industry was tremendous. The cows with, uh, you know, with calves on them, they can be pretty aggressive. Like that cow, if you got out to, got out of the truck right now, she'd put you back in here. <laughs> <laughs>I think when you look at uh, the bison and their history in, in uh, you know, North America, certainly they were a mainstay for indigenous peoples back, uh, you know, back before the white men even came here. And, and the natives found a way where virtually they used every part of the animal. The hides were used for, for clothing, for shelter, uh, you know, various, various parts of the animals from, from different bones were, were used for tools and, and then certainly the, the meat. And, and today I think that, that although the, the focus is certainly on the, on the meat as the mainstay product, uh, you know, we, we are seeing uh, furniture manufacturers that are, that are making uh, furniture out of bison hide. We've, we've seen, uh, you know, various leather products developed. And I think, you know, the skulls have been, become, a, you know, sort of a, a decorative um, entity of their own. Uh, some people are doing things with that, whether it be full head mounts or, or just the skulls. And, and certainly there's, there's more and more that's being developed where all parts of the, of the bison are being used. I think one of the one of the big pluses I think for for anybody looking that's interested in getting into the industry is to uh, to get familiar with the associations I think both uh, you know when you look at the regional associations and the national association they've they played a big role in uh, in the development of the industry and certainly we work very closely with the National Bison Association out of the US and I think that uh, that there's a wealth of information there on the production side for for producers if they you know are looking to to start up in the industry and and even when it comes to marketing product you know we've got people that are marketing product either through more uh, developed channels uh, you know and and will work closely within a value chain but we've got a lot of producers that that choose to market their product direct and they'll They'll attend farmers markets or, or just even off their own ranch, you, you know, you're able to find bison meat. And for the consumer, if they're looking, I think that, you know, one of the ways to, uh, is if you're going to your local uh, grocery store is to ask, you know, if, the, if bison meat is available and they can get it and bring it in for you. Certainly at restaurants, we're starting to see it show up more and more on different uh, restaurant menus, on, on retail store shelves. But another source, uh, you know, if somebody's looking is if you go to the Canadian Bison Association website, we, we have a, um, a section on there for consumers of where to buy bison meat. And, and there there'll be contact information for different uh, producers and, and you'll find somebody in your area. Currently we've got, you know, close to 600 members uh, across Canada in, in virtually all the provinces. Uh, We've even got some producers out in the Maritimes. So I think there's, for pr consumers that are looking for the product, certainly uh, if they need help in, in finding it, we'd be more than happy to, to oblige.